إن الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهدي الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بعد فقال تعالى في كتابه الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساعلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا كولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتي الله ورسوله فقد فاذ فوزا عظيما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما صليت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى ال محمد كما باركت على ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين. All praise for Allah subhanahu wa taala. We glorify Him, and I testify that there is none worthy of worship but Allah, and I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is His servant and final messenger. I invoke Allah subhanahu wa taala to send His blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. His family, his companions, and upon all believers until Yom Al Qiyamah. On this blessed day, Yom Al Jum'ah, we pray Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala forgive us of our sins, increase us in Iman, make us from those who understand Islam, give us the increased knowledge in Islam, and I pray for those who have passed before us that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Forgive them of their sins and have mercy upon them. Make their grave a garden from the gardens of paradise, and to accept them into Jannah till Firdaus Allah. And we pray for those who are sick from among us, that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala provide His cure for their illness, give them comfort in these times of their trials, increase them with iman, and to let them increase their dependence upon Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And on this blessed day, we pray for our children that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala continue to pour into their hearts stronger iman to make them the leaders of this nation of Islam. And I, on that point, I'm happy that I'm standing here today. I'm looking around, and there were days when I was younger, and these young men were in our classes and our study circles, and today, Alhamdulillah. They find a slot for this old man to stand before you, and I'm, I, I, I'm happy that we can enjoy and realize this du'a that we always make. Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa duriyatina kura taaini wa jalna lil muttaqina imama. The the last part of the du'a that Allah make our children the comfort of our eyes, and today we see, alhamdulillah, the young men. Young boys are running all the masajids, and I pray Allah continue to bless us with with this great blessing that we can listen to them, follow them, and that Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala make them from the those who are successful, inshallah. And you know, we are in a blessed day. This is the the Eid of the week. Allah has given us this opportunity that we can attend the masjid for this Eid. The Eid of the week, the blessed day, you know. So, this is an opportunity that Allah is giving us every Friday. Or, 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 as a matter of fact, every day, as we leave our homes, we 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 leave with the left foot, and then we recite the du'a. 
that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will depend on you. Oh Allah, Allahumma, uh, oh Allah, we, we depend on you and all things come from you. You have all the powers. But we put, Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah, la hawla wa la quwata illa billah. We, we begin our journey with the name of Allah. And then Allah protect us from that moment. Because we are leaving our home, we are leaving in the path to our jobs, to the masjid, anywhere we go shopping, we say, Bismillah, tawakkaltu ala Allah, when we leave our home. Oh Allah, I'm putting my, my, my trust in you. Protect me, guide me. And from the moment we leave our home, and, we, and in this case, as we enter the masjid, the space that you are sitting on, Allah has chosen that spot for you. No one else could have sit there. This was a blessing from Allah. Protected you until you reach to the masjid and you sit in that spot and you are now connecting yourself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because this was our dua. You go into your cars or your, or your, or your bike or you walk in, you begin your journey by saying, Subhanallah, li sakarana haza wa ma kunna lahum muqlineen. You're putting your, your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Guide me, protect me. And here you are sitting in the presence of Allah, connecting yourself. You know, many times we will hear people say, our entire life, the first ayah I recited, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqati wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun. Do not die except that you submit yourself completely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But then we're saying, how can we completely submit ourselves to Allah? I have to go to work. I have my family to take care of. But that becomes when we say, Bismillah, Allah, I begin with everything I do. Holistically, we are falling. Islam becomes our life. Because Allah becomes our, become our first word that we utter as we go out to do what we have to do. And then Allah protect you from that moment, brings you into the masjid. You sit in that spot, you pray in that spot, and you connect yourself with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then you leave. And then you leave after you say the, the Ayatul Kursi. Protect yourself. Put your trust in Allah. Acknowledging his powers. And Allah makes it so easy so that we can follow in every moment in our life that we can be Muslim, that we can be believer, that we are submitting ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why in Surah Hud, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Ayah 88 to the, to the end of the Ayah, وَمَا تَوْفِيكِ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ تَوَكَلْتُ عَلَيْهِ وَإِلَيْهِ أُنِيبِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, each and every one of us here, you know, sometimes you say, I can't do this. I can't pray to Hajjud. I cannot fast in the month of Ramadan. I, I cannot do this. I cannot do that. But Allah is telling us, each and every one of us, Allah has given us a special quality, characteristic in our life that you can do. You have the ability to do anything that you put your trust in Allah. He said, I... In Allah I put my trust. And to Him I submit. And to Him I come back with sincerity, with humbleness. And Allah would make it easy for you. And there are so many examples in Quran that we can, you know, this ayah points us. Allah says in Surah, in Surah Baqarah reminds us that, you know, when He, Allah ordered the Prophet wasallam to go out to fight in the way of Allah. You know, and then he mentioned, he mentions to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, fighting in, is enjoined upon you while it is hard on you. In this case, it's saying, fighting is, is, uh, is enjoined upon you. But in ourselves, take this, this ayah, put it to ourselves. Allah has enjoined upon us His commandments, His prayers, His fasting, Zakat, you know, anything that Allah has commanded us to do it. Sometimes it becomes hard to do that. But Allah is telling us in this ayah, saying to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
وَهُوَ خَيْلُ لَكُمْ You know, while you may not, you know, it's something that is enjoined upon you. It could be that you dislike this, this something. You dislike it. You don't want to pay your zakat. You don't want to come to, you know, it's time for, for the work, for the job. And it's time for Jummah. So which one do I choose? You know, if, I don't, if I don't come, I'm accountable to Allah. If I, if I leave the job to come to Jummah, then I'm accountable to my boss. What should I do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in this ayah, He enjoin upon you something and you may dislike it. But when it's, uh, and it could be good for you. You dislike it, but it could be good for you. And this is how we make, you know, this is the psychology of the Quran. You know, we talk about psychology and all these psychologists. But here the Quran itself is teaching us psychology. It's telling us something. That you are enjoying, this is enjoined upon you, your prayers, your fasting, to be kind to your family, to be kind to each other. It's enjoined upon you. Now I have to make a decision. And Allah has given us this simple answer, how we can become good Muslims. It's enjoined upon you, it, you may not like it, but this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and He only gives us good. And He does not make it hard for us. You know, that Allah does not make it difficult for us. It looks difficult, you may not like it, but it may be good for you. And then Allah continued in the ayah, تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And Allah says, and, for you, and it could be that you like something when it is bad for you. And Allah knows and you do not know. You may like to stay on the job and forget about the Jummah. I'll come next week. I'll call, I could miss two Jummah in a row, but I should not miss the third one. You know, I make all these excuses. Make an excuse of everything. You know, I could stay home today. But it may be bad for you. You know, something that is, you know, I'm trying to think of examples that we can use every day in our life. You know, and then think of this ayah. When, these, when shaitan come to us, think of this ayah. Ayah 216 of Surah Baqarah. Go and look it up. Read it. And let it be part of our lives. The psychology that Allah is giving us. That use this, that something may be difficult for you, but it's enjoined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do it. Do it knowing that Allah is your wali. Allah is your protector. You, know, you leave your job and you come for Juma and then you go back. Allah is your protector. You know, and there are so many things that 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 is in our life. You know, you may be tempted to. Maybe go to the store and get a lot of everybody's winning 10 million. Why can I not get 10 million? Why should I not take the chance like everyone else? It's easy to do that. But when I think of this ayah, this, you know, it's, 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 it's something haram. It's something that is not good for you. And you may like it. But then you say, Allah said to me that you may like something, but it's bad for you. And what would be our reaction? Of course, we will be start doing the good things. We will stay away from the temptations of shaitan. A simple ayah. And this was given to the Prophet ﷺ to convey to us. But, and again, if we read the Quran regularly, we pick up the Quran daily or most of the week. You know, try to recite Quran. I'm not just reciting it because to fulfill, fulfill that I have recited the Quran. You know, the brother just uh, uh, announced that, you know, if we cannot recite Quran properly, come and come join the classes or try to do it some, some other places. But Quran has to be our life. You know, I was listening to a talk the other day on Surah Fatiha. And to my, you know, astonishment, when the brother was explaining, you know, sometimes you read, but some of us, we are praying, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Aliki Yawmineen, Iyaka Nabil, Iyaka Nastayin. And the brother said to, you know, he was explaining this thing, that if you say, Iyaka Nabil, Iyaka Nastayin, you are just completely saying something different. 
I am putting my trust in the sun. And I'm putting my trust in the sun. And I'm putting my trust in, you know, I'm seeking help from, from the sun. Or the brother is showing me maybe the, the waves. In a river in hellfire. But the point is that the brother was explaining Quran becomes has to become our life. It is part of our life. And if we do not try to perfect it, you know, all of us may not be able to recite like Sheikh Ali. But we can all make the effort to recite. We can make the effort to make our salah, the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be perfect or to be in the best manner to our ability the best of our ability we should try to do that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would make it easy for us and I just want to quickly mention some of the things when Allah mentioned that something may be you know you may think that you don't have the ability to do things but Allah gave us the examples in Quran to show us, we all know the story of, you know, we grew up hearing the story of uh, David killed Goliath. You know, everyone knows the story. David, young man, and he killed this giant Goliath. It's in Surah Baqarah, Ayah 242 and on. We read the story. David killed Goliath. The young man, he was weak than this man, than this big man. But he put his trust, you know, when, when, the people at that time, the Israelites, there was, you know, the prophet, the prophet was there, he was very old. The name of the prophet is not mentioned, but he was very old. And they said to him, we, they call upon him, can you call God, ask your God to send to us someone who could be our leader so that we could follow your commandments, his commandments. You know, the story as it goes. And they said then, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded that, uh, Talut become their, their, their leader. And then they said to, this, to the prophet, he says that how can he be our, our, our leader? This man is weak. He is poor. He doesn't, he doesn't have affluence in wealth. You know, how can you send this man to be our leader? You know? Again, I'm, I want you to focus. Allah said, Wa ma tawfiki illa billah. This man was not considered to be someone who could be our leader. And then, then it was said to them, as we say as in the ayah, that Allah has blessed Talud with the knowledge and the wisdom and the strength to lead you. Eventually, after there was the story went on, which is too long to speak about, but they, act, they finally accept him to be his leader. And they were going out in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the battle. And then Talut said to the people who were following him for this battle against Jalut, the Goliath. Then he said to them, this journey is very difficult. We will go on this journey and we will have to cross a river. But none of you should drink from the river. But if you have to drink, it should not be more than a handful. But of course, like all of us, when we are given an injunction, we have to think and then we, we, say, we go to all the sheikhs and to find a sheikh that can, can make this injunction fit to what I want. And then I'm satisfied. These people follow his, their leader, this man, Talut. And as they were going, they were, they were tired, they're thirsty, long journey. And they're crossing the river, and the majority of them, as, as we expected, the majority of this group drank the water, filled up their bellies. And then he said to them, any one of you who drink from this water, from this river, would not be from among us, would not be from the believers. Those who do not obey Allah's commands, we just play with our prayers, with our salah. We pray when we want to pray. We pray on Fridays only. We pray on salah in Ramadan. You know, we are making fun of, our, of, of, the, of the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he said to them, you are not from us. Just a few of them, a handful of his, 
of his army was left with him. And they said to him, how can we now fight against this army where Jalut is, is, is there, is present? You know? And Jalut being strong, he said to these few people, he said, I'm challenging anyone who could come forward. And this is a story that we all grew up knowing. Right? And then uh, uh, Dawood, he was a young man, and he volunteered. He said, I'm coming to you. I'm going to do the fight. And eventually, he killed J J uh, uh, Jalud. And the Muslims, that few Muslims, the ability, what was the ability that was given to them? That they had strong iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They went in this battle. They went to fight. They went with the humbleness and the sincerity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our protector. That Allah is our protector. Allah is our wali. And eventually they, they became successful. I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from this group of people who understand that our ability to do things come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I could be the, the, the best engineer or the best reciter of Quran, but it's only by the will of Allah that I can exercise that, that ability. So I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who put our trust in Allah and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the righteous Muslims. Amin. In alhamdulillah hamdan kathiran tayyaban mubarakan fi Allahu nuru samawati wal ard ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu ba'd Allahumma salli ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammadin kama sallaita ala ibrahim wa ala ali ibrahim innaka hamidum majid Allahumma barik ala muhammadin wa ala ali muhammadin kama barakta Allah Ibrahim wa ala al Ibrahim innaka hamidum majid Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab an nar Brothers and sisters in Islam we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these times of trials for our brothers and sisters in Palestine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide them with his protection with his with with his uh, let them continue depending upon it uh, upon him. You know, for the last few months, for the last year, we have been looking at the people of Palestine. What did we learn from it? What did we learn from it? We are looking at it, we are seeing buildings are tumbling on families. Kids, children are dying. Women are dying. But those who survive, what is their first word? All of us looking at the TV, and we can see it, we can hear it for ourselves. The first word comes out of the mouth of those people who survive from under the rubble. La hawla wa quwata. Hasbi Allah tawakaltu alayhi. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is our protector. They put their trust in Allah. They put their trust in Allah. This is something that we have to take away from that. As we make dua for them, that Allah make us like them, strong, sincere, knowing that Allah is our, our protector, knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them this trial as a way of lessons for us, for those who are looking on. You know, those of us who are looking at this, that it becomes a trial for us, that it increases us in Iman. How many of us for the last year that we are witnessing the genocide that's going on. How many of us has truthfully, sincerely to ourselves said, this has made me a better Muslim. Allah has given us this trial so that we can increase in Iman. That we can, we can come closer to Him, nearer to Him. Because for every trial that Allah has given us, has given people, for every trial is supposed to bring us closer to Allah. This is a trial for us. Allah has given us wealth. 
it becomes a trial for us. We have to account for it. He has given us good help. That's why sometimes I, you know, I pray for people who say, I never get sick. Sometimes sickness is good. You know, the health is good, but the sickness makes us come closer to Allah. Oh Allah, help me. Oh Allah, cure me. Sincerity, it creates in us so that we can build our iman. Becomes better Muslims, stronger Muslims. Muslims who are sincere in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So trials is always good. So as we look and we pray for our, for our brothers and sisters in, in Palestine, we pray for those in India who are punishing. It's just opening, you know, I saw the other day, just opening water and it's fr flowing. Why it's only flowing in the Muslims area? Floating everything away, killing people. In, in, in Kashmir, these are things that we have to keep close to our heart. Not to get depressed but to make us better Muslim. If we don't know, what's, look what's happening in Bangladesh. Hopefully, inshallah, that the people of Bangladesh may see the ease and the comfort and bring, bring victory to them, to the good Muslims. It's everywhere that we look, in Africa, every part of Africa. You know, these are trials that these people are facing. And again, I'm emphasizing it's something that we have to internalize so that they become, you know, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullah haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna ila wa antum muslimun. Every Friday we hear it. Every khutbah we hear it. Oh, do, oh, you who believe, fear Allah. Put your trust in Allah. And die save not except you submit yourself to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the ways that Allah is testing us, is guiding us. When we say, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, these are the ways that Allah is guiding us to bring us back consciously to His commandments, to the prayers and the fasting and, and charity, and to be kind, to be respectful. These are the things that even non Muslims are adopting it. And Muslims are getting crazy. Because we are not trying to educate ourselves. We are not reciting Quran. We are not reading Quran. We are not trying to understand. We may not speak Arabic. But the meaning is there. The translations are there. There's no one in this, in, in this earth cannot say, I don't understand Quran. Because it's there for us to understand. But we have to make the effort. Allah says in Quran, you come to me, recite Quran, and he opens the meaning to you. He opens the reality of it to you. But if we are not reciting it, if we are not you know, coming with it, being part of our partner, our friend, then we cannot understand it. Allah would open the reality of these words and His guidance in Quran, Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim. He would make it clear and easy for us. And then when we pray, we recite Surah Fatiha. And we pray, and we are praying, connecting ourselves with Allah. We concentrate. We don't think about what's happening outside. We don't think what is happening with my children. We are thinking that Allah has sent me here. He has chosen me to be in this, in this masjid at this time to worship Him. It becomes, my salah becomes stronger, sweeter. The Iman, I get to feel Iman because I am with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when I give charity, I'm not giving it with this pride and to, for someone to say, this brother is a generous person. I'm giving it and I'm expecting back from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I'm coming closer to Him. He's protecting me, He's guiding me. He's making it easier for me. And when we start to live our life holistically, doing what Allah commands us to do with such simplicity, with humbleness, with sincerity, ikhlas. You know, and we talk about ikhlas and we should understand all of us recite Surah Ikhlas every day because we want to finish the Salah quickly. Understand it. 
and then we know the reality of it and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we pray that he bring us closer to him to understand his commandments I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all sincere Muslims I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provide for the people of Palestine and around the world who are being oppressed that Allah give them victory against their enemies I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to fill our hearts with Iman and for us to, to, to enjoy the sweetness of Iman I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our children to bless our families to bless our communities I pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continue to increase us in knowledge of this deen of Islam and I pray Allah make us all from the people of Jannatul Firdaus al-A'la Rabbana innana amanna faqfir lana dhunubana wa kina adhaba nar Rabbana taqabbal minna innaka anta samiul alim wa atub alayna innaka anta tawabu rahim Allahumma ahdina fi man haday wa afina fi man afay wa tawallana fi man tawalay wa barik lana fi ma atay wa kina shirka ma qaday fa innaka taqdi wa la yugda alay innahu la yadhillu man wa alay تبارك ربنا وتعالى ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم واتوب لنا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم إبادة الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذبكم لعلكم تذكرون من الصلاة